in Cape Town now joining us to discuss uh, the impact that high municipal rates are having on commercial property in South Africa. It's Gary Palmer, CEO of Paragon Lending Solutions. Morning to you, Gary. Uh, rates are the kind of thing that a lot of people don't talk about. They sound boring. They get auto automatically deducted, but uh, it can be a big cost to the business. What's the state of play with rates? Uh, are rates higher than they used to be in proportion to uh, a company's revenue and, and expenditure? What's, what's been happening? Absolutely. Good morning. Good morning to you and your listeners. Absolutely. When you look at commercial property um, and you look at the expenses, ultimately what we've seen over the last five, six years is that it, expenses have increased dramatically. Um, the major component of those expenses are property rates and uh, electricity. Now, if you just focus on the rates for a second, um, you've certainly seen, I mean, some clients of, of mine are telling me that their rates bill has increased uh, by 500% over the last five years. Um, you know, last year alone, um, 20 three percent increases we're seeing so um, you know that's on the rate side uh, electricity prices as well has, has had a huge impact um, where electricity prices have increased over 170 percent over the last five years now if you're a commercial property owner you know your lease does dictate that you can pass on these costs to your tenants but you know if your tenant is very very difficult to absorb these massive increases so there's a bit of a, a standoff between the landlords and the tenants at the moment in terms of who can afford to absorb these costs Gary the, I can understand the electricity because uh, Eskom has to pass on its costs and the electricity was artificially low for for a long time why are the rates increasing at such a high rate if I may put it like that uh, is it an indirect uh, way of taxing people more yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the municipalities um, are, are re requiring income and requiring revenue, and the best way to do that is through uh, property rates. So, uh, you know, there's a whole debate. Uh, I was recently at the Sapoa conference in Cape Town, uh, where the you know these big listed funds were having a debate with uh, the in municipalities. They're requiring revenue, and these uh, all property owners are complaining that they don't understand the factors that are being attributed, how they you know can apply these massive increases. So, you know, it's just another way of the uh, municipality taxing landowners and property owners. So what's to be done about this? You've talked about uh, passing on the costs but you can only do that so much uh, and are there other ways of uh, reducing th this cost? Well, I don't think so. I think there's a, again, there's a debate um, that's happening in the market at the moment where there should clearly be better transparency. Um, you know, one thing is you, 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 we all learn to deal with what's on our table. And unfortunately, if you're a property owner and you just see these huge increases and you're not seeing the services being delivered, there's one, on one hand, you're seeing the cost increase, but then when you look at service delivery, um, it's not there. So that's what's causing a lot of frustration. So um, I think a greater transparency and communication between the municipality and, and property owners um, certainly is required and and also communication with uh, between the landlords and the tenants now you know these tenants ca can't afford um, you know these increases especially when they happen you know uh, all of a sudden and they haven't budgeted for it so it's certainly a time for communication between the landlords uh, the tenants the municipalities and the lenders and the, and, the, and the property lenders the banks and other lenders who ultimately you know when there's gearing against these properties um, ultimately when the costs increase increase and, uh, and the tenants can't afford to pay these increases, there might be vacancies and defaults which ultimately will affect the banks. Yeah, looking at uh, the, how the effect of this on investment in that sector, I remember the IPD numbers, I think it was for 2011 and 2012, saying that commercial property in South Africa delivered mm -hmm. the best returns, I think Johannesburg and Cape Town they were talking about, best returns in the world according to the IPD uh, database. Now, if this kind of yes. cost uh, increase is coming in year after year, huge increases in electricity and rates, as you've explained, surely the investment proposition falls off sharply. 100% right. I mean, I'm personally concerned about commercial property with these huge margin squeezes. We've been discussing the cost increases. Uh, I think there's huge pressure on, uh, on revenue um, in terms of the general GDP of, of the country. Um, and some people say we're going into recession with interest rates increasing at the moment. Uh, I'm concerned there's a big um, margin squeeze when it comes to commercial property. What we've seen um, sort of in our business and the lending business is a lot of our clients are, are looking at other um, uh, property transactions and now they're starting to look again at residential 
now you know pre 2008 we used to see a lot of investors you know and, uh, and clients coming to us looking for residential uh, property investments that somehow stopped the banks stopped lending um, against residential developments and focused on commercial and now we're seeing it coming back into the market where uh, some astute property investors are looking at alternative uh, property investments like specialized residential what are the vehicles for residential i mean the obvious simple vehicle is you buy a house uh, or you buy other houses to let to people and try and make money that way but you're talking about investment on a bigger scale is it housing estates is it uh, buying up hundreds of houses H how does it work well, absolutely I think when I talk about specialized residential you know you speak about student accommodation as an example you know these are uh, residential components where you can get big scale and on, on uh, student accommodation we've certainly seen that um, and, and now all of a sudden these big uh, listed property funds are now speaking about student accommodation where they m might not have uh, spoken about it a year ago um, another one is uh, retirement villages and retirement complexes as well and also um, another concept called multifamily, which is, you know, in, in the United States, it's a massive part of the property market, all these big housing uh, and residential estates. And then in South Africa as well, you've got the affordable market as well. Um, and the banks have become particularly aggressive in the affordable space. Um, and now we're seeing them opening up their channels uh, to focus on other specialized residential. So my view in the next two to three years, um, you'll start seeing these listed property funds start focusing on uh, the specialized residential area. That's an interesting one, of course, so one then has to look at residential rates as well. That was Gary Palmer, CEO of Paragon Lending Solutions, who joined us uh, from Cape Town.